Well, good afternoon. Uh, today, um, I, I have the pleasure of introducing uh, Curtis Dadian. Uh, Curtis uh, is the National Sales Manager uh, for PIP Mobile Storage, uh, one of our best-in-class uh, vendors that we've been working with internationally. Uh, I've had the pleasure of working with PIP uh, for three years uh, as of last month, uh, and they've been outstanding in providing uh, Theracan International, which you're seeing our center behind us uh, here in Panama as well as our Sprout AI Vertical Urban Farming Technologies. Uh, so what we're going to chat about today is, is just that, vertical urban farming. Uh, we're seeing a mass push uh, into this new sector. Uh, a lot of cash has come into this new sector. Companies are going public, always the first sign that it's, uh, it's got some legs. Uh, but we're seeing entire cities and countries uh, decide it's time to uh, uh, effectively get control over their food chain and for that they're growing indoors and they're growing vertical. So welcome uh, Curtis. I, I'd love to hear a little bit more about your experience with PIP and then we could talk about what we're doing specifically with your company but please uh, welcome to our Theracast and, and tell us a little bit about PIP. Go ahead. Thank you Chris. Happy to be here. Appreciate the time and um, and yeah PIP mobile storage has uh, been around for quite a while uh, about 40 years and had really um, spent most of that time servicing the business and retail markets, specifically targeting backhouse retail brands, the large brands you see throughout the world, really some of the largest retail brands. And, and um, PIP has dominated that market. Um, we operate out of a pretty large facility in Grand Rapids, Michigan, We've done that for the entire time. And, and about three years ago, as you know, things started to present opportunities in the horticulture indoor cultivation space and we decided to kind of dip our toe in the water and, and find out what that's all about and already having a pretty substantial operation uh, pit mobile storage um, you know we had developed really strong production capabilities fast lead times economical products and we really known as a leader in that space um, we didn't really understand what was out there in the horticulture cultivation market but we started to hear that things were happening and we started to think that we just may have something that can be of value. We really didn't know to what extent at the time. So about three and a half years ago, we started to get a bit educated and we learned that there was a tremendous need and not only was there a need, but there was also a lot of uh, mystery on how to fill this need. So we really had to get educated and learn and start to understand where can we enter the space? Where is our real value and what do the customers need from us? We originally thought, oh man, we can, we're the racking experts. We're going to talk to these customers, let them tell us what they need for racking in their indoor facilities and we'll build it. Piece of cake, right? And um, we learned pretty quickly, nobody really knew and they needed help and direction to understand how to put this facility together. And, and we were a key part of that. We meaning the mobile vertical racking systems given that these bedrooms, flower rooms, clone rooms, dry rooms, they're all filled with product that needs to accommodate their, what they're producing, their plants. And, and so we became kind of the, the backbone, kind of the spine of these facilities and things are attaching to, hanging from, being affected by, you know, the plant count that we can uh, accommodate within a facility. Uh, what are the lights that are being incorporated in? How about airflow and drainage? How do we handle microclimates? And how do these customers mitigate these risks and, and pitfalls that they're bound to run into in an environment that they've never operated before? And so we really all started to learn together. And I think that's been, our, that, that was our initial takeaway was, uh, this is complex, this is new, this is large scale, there's a lot of money on the table to get it right. And we've got to help the customers. And to do that, we've got to not just remain steel benders out of Michigan. We've got to become uh, as close to the cultivation space as we can be. And, and we had to, had to build that operations. We actually created a division underneath our parent, which you mentioned, Pit Mobile Storage Systems. We created uh, a, new, a new brand, a new team, a new operation, Pip Horticulture back in 2017 and have operated since then. And today I'd say we, I'm, I'm happy to say that we now have hundreds of facilities operating and growing on pit mobile vertical racking systems. Uh, we understand the difference between a clone room and a bedroom and a flower room in a way that we didn't three years ago. And uh, we've really built a really strong network of suppliers, consultants, architects, contractors, 
because this application really calls for indoor mobile vertical racking, and there are only a small number of players in the space, unlike lighting or something where you've got 70 or 80 choices. Here you've got three, four, five options. Pitt being the lead player in that space, we get called uh, on most, if not all, of these projects. So it, it brings us into these grow facilities. Even though we're not the grower, we're talking to growers every day and not one or two, but 10 or 50. With a sales team and a worldwide market now, we're talking to growers every day at high volume dealing with the problems that they're facing and then taking those conversations and that knowledge and learning into each and every new new customer so we really feel good about where we are yeah we've got a lot to learn still and continue to do that to evolve our our knowledge and our products to fit the need for gmp compliance and things like that right. that we're continuing to uh to think about so i'll, I'll pause there sorry to Oh, no, that's an excellent introduction. I can attest to that, uh, being your client now for three years. Uh, you know, for our viewers and, and as our clients would attest, uh, you know, PIP is all about continual improvement. And uh, PIP is also flexible. Uh, we're here to provide a solution, uh, not, not just a skew. And uh, in, in the case of, of our center of excellence behind us, uh, being able to uh, fabricate a custom design, which is five feet wide rolling rack, uh, as opposed to four feet, which would be atypical of the image behind you. Uh, yep. five and I remember that. I remember that conversation when that request uh, hit our desk. Yeah, yep, that was three years ago last month. And and here we are today, right? And, and we're putting in projects globally uh, based, based on that footprint. Um, now, what I like about PIP and, and where we saw some really good uh, market synergies uh, is at the end of the day, uh, indoor growing's expensive. It can be unless you can show that you're maximizing the square footage of the facility. And what we found, and, and that was the holy grail, uh, was being able to uh, clearly demonstrate uh, that growing vertically, uh, where we're eliminating unnecessary aisles, like you see in a shipping container grow sure. off, right? Or in a, in a warehouse where they're trying to structure a bunch of ticky tacky tiny spaces, yep. or uh, areas where it's all vertical rack but fixed, um, we use all that extra space, and, and because of that, we can be extremely cost competitive to the point where we beat out greenhouses. Uh, and, and for us, that was, that was the game changer. The addition that we went after as well, and PIPS was able to accommodate, uh, is we put habitats on those rolling racks that are, are self-contained and closed. Uh, zip them up, leave them alone, come back when it's time to harvest. So we do it with a fraction of the staff. And the microclimate that we're, we're, we're servicing isn't the whole warehouse space. It's just the area for cultivation. Right. Yeah, so that, that helped further reduce our costs. But at the end of the day, we had to use a racking system that, as you said, was GMP compliant. That's all important. Uh, but it also had to be uh, able to meet <laughs> occupational health and safety. Sure. And, uh, you know, the <laughs> projects that we're putting in Zimbabwe and South Africa and elsewhere, uh, these are pushing four levels high now. Uh, so we're in the 40 foot plus range uh, in making sure that uh, the, the local inspector understands that these won't topple over and kill people. Yeah, no simple task, no doubt. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Now, in terms of COVID, the other thing that impressed me with PIP, uh, unlike other vendors that, that, that we've had experience in the past, you guys didn't miss much of a beat. You're able to carry on uh, in meeting your orders during uh, PIP uh, during COVID uh, yep. at, at your facility, which was outstanding. So good to you. But what are Thank you me. seeing with regards to an increase now uh, with regards to interest in, in securing local supply chain? Are you seeing a shift away from just the big cannabis producers that decide to go indoor? Are you starting to see people wanting to grow just straight out leafy greens and microgreens? How does that look? Yeah, um, we, we are. And um, I'd say we get a fairly steady flow of inquiries at a low, much lower level. You know, it's probably less than 10% of our requests are non-cannabis non applications. Um, and we have had a handful of design, handful of conversations, no installs yet. I think that'll be coming soon. So um, we are getting those calls, those, those big cities, those areas where they really want to have um, those leafy greens on demand, quick and, and accessible and they don't have the environment to grow year round, um, those are where we're seeing some interest and where we see there's an application for us. Um, so that's a, that's a new focus yeah. that we'll be putting more energy into soon. 
Well, this year, for example, uh, starting in Q2, uh, in that accelerated in Q3 and now the uh, light speed in Q4, for remote communities, uh, in, in depending on the country, like in Canada, for example, that could be an indigenous community uh, that, that has no food security anymore. Uh, we also saw in Western Canada, uh, the uh, uh, closure by the Canadian Food Inspection Agency of Leafy sure. Canadians coming out of California. <laughs> Till the end of December, and that could yeah. be further extended because of E. coli yeah. 157 being part of, of, of the grow, uh, which is normal uh, if you're in a big flood table base and, and you're using uh, water that's contaminated with feces. However, sure. <laughs> indoor grow typically doesn't have those uh, big issues because we're either using municipal water or our own. Now, that said, though, uh, tell us a little bit more about where you see this technology heading. If the focus will be, for example, on governments uh, to secure, uh, what are we looking at? Are we looking at these mega facilities? Are we looking at micro facilities? What What are your thoughts on how yeah, you so think the market? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great question, and, and we're seeing it coming from all directions right now. Multi set operators, the small local growers, and everything in between. Yeah, um, so sure, we anticipate consolidation in the marketplace. We anticipate some of these larger brands and larger corporations, especially domestically in the U.S. is, you know, we think legalization is likely coming, you know, coast to coast. So that is not here yet. But when those things start to happen, um, then of course we'll see movement in, in, the, uh, in the type of organizations that, that commit and get involved. Um, <clears throat> but right now it is, um, it is coming in all shapes and sizes uh, with, with high volume. Well, for example, uh, uh, <laughs> Indonesia uh, came out yesterday um, saying that as a country, uh, it wants to secure indoor growth. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to dedicate up to $150 million, uh, to start these projects and get them underway. Uh, Bangkok is hosting a, a once, uh, a, a first time uh, urban vertical farming um, trade show in Bangkok, uh, wow. in allocating dollars uh, to, to the city to find ways to grow indoors. Now, both yeah. of these countries have climates unlike Canada where you can grow all year round, and yet uh, they feel the need uh, uh, to do this, probably because it is secure. And if you can do it close enough to where it needs to get to market, then there's no interruption with regards to transportation, right? Uh, so that should be interesting. Now, in, in terms of your facility, you're based in the United States, but you're working globally now. Is there any plans to expand your reach uh, to fabricate in other countries? What does that look like? Uh, we, would, we would love to be doing that. And <clears throat> that conversation happens about monthly. <laughs> um, <laughs> internally yeah. here at the corporate yeah. office. Um, it's obviously a big step and a big move. And we've serviced these international markets for, for years on the retail and business side. Yeah, but we don't have local production outside the U.S. And, and that's a conversation that continues to happen. And we realize as that request grows, as the demand grows for our product, that's something that we're going to need to address. At this point right now, we are servicing the world from our factory in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which has worked very well. Uh, but, you know, we're here in Panama. We're right on the Panama Canal. Uh, yep. The reason is, is, is we have access to the canal, right? And we, we can put things in shipping containers and get them all over the planet. But uh, when you're in the center of a continent, uh, you have to get it out to rail, out to seaport and then off. And of, of course, that has its own challenges. I appreciate that. Well, that's good news. Um, our, and, and keep us posted on that. I'm sure we could have another chat about it because we'd love to help you there. Uh, the closer you are to our other foreign markets, all the better for us. And, and, and that's yep. awesome. Now, in, in terms of word warrantability and, and the types of issues that, that, that uh, you, you continually improved uh, with, with the, the more mobile storage racks uh, over time, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your warranty and, 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 and what, what's new, what might be coming along for new features or functionality? Yeah, two great questions, Chris. So um, uh, warranty is, is, uh, is fantastic. We, we warranty our product for five years. Uh, for any kind of defective material or, or breakdown of the, of the equipment. Um, our trays are warrantied for three years. Um, service is minimal on a system like this, which is why we can cover the product the way we do. Um, there will be an opportunity to have an extended service coverage plan after the warranty period 
Um, but we are all about customer service. And when our clients have an issue, we're, we're there. Of course, the international markets are a bit different for us without staff locally. Um, in those markets, we provide training support for installation. We provide supervision for installation and training during the supervision. And we're able to service parts needed just through the shipment system and, and uh, any kind of virtual support for install and troubleshooting. But um, we stand by the product. Um, they're designed to last 30 plus years and um, services is, is easy to maintain on site for the customer. And again, we're about a five year, five year warranty on coverage. Well, and I, again, I can attest to that. So our managed services agreements with our clients are five years. Uh, and that's why this aligns so well. Uh, okay. and it's our staff that are on site doing the assembly, the erection uh, of, of the uh, rolling rack system and then putting the habitats directly into the racks together with all the other equipment for a full vertical uh, scale operation. But it's lovely because the support has been very good. And uh, I believe in our first shipment, we were missing like one part and, and it just, you know, the, the, your team came together so quickly and said, here's, here's, here's the workaround. Let's just get this going. And, and you Wonderful. Did. Like me, it was yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Not surprised to hear that. And, but it's, it's nice. <clears throat> it's nice to hear that, but not surprised. Yeah. No, is it? Well, there's, there was a lot of parts. So it, it happened yeah. and we rushed you guys. I, I think you, yeah. you had a week to get it all together and, and get it down to us in time for our first trade show here in Panama. That's right. Uh, now with regards uh, uh, to any uh, enhancements or, or, or future changes uh, to the racks or you know, you've been at this for a while and I'm not expecting any, uh, but is there anything else coming down the pipe we should be aware of? Yeah, well, we're constantly looking at how the product's performing. And early on, we had some low-hanging fruit. You know, most of our uh, carriage and rail system is constructed out of aluminum, always has been. So we're ahead of the game there already in terms of corrosion-resistant materials. Uh, there were a few components that were steel. We had to convert those to stainless steel or zinc-coated, which we've done. Um, for GMP compliance, we had some exposed chains and gears. We had to cover those, which we've done um, to help those clients are going through those certification reviews and practices and kind of make that process easier for them. We are uh, partnering with uh, cleaning company products with foaming agents and things like that that we can share with our customers and help them save some time on how do we maintain, you know, how, how do we transition during harvest and how do we get ready for the next harvest with our product and and we're able to again take that information and, and kind of help that customer move more quickly through that learning curve so in the time that we have remaining i i, I believe you've covered all the bases uh, curtis and i really appreciate uh, your time today and we will follow up uh, in future as as we motor along with new creative projects but um you know is there any any other point that you'd like to bring up today is there did we cover it all well, I really appreciate the opportunity to have the conversation, Chris. Thank you for that. And um, really enjoy getting closer to our customers like this, understanding uh, what your vision is, what you're learning, how you're evolving in the space. And we kind of learn together. So we want to make sure we're available to you as well. Keep that in mind. We've got thousands of projects that we're working any, any day of the week. And we're happy to, um, you know, just share nuggets of important information that just may be of value. So never hesitate to reach out. I know you've got great representation with Paul and um, he's available. Apologize. He's available 24 seven as well yeah. as my, myself, my whole team. We've got in-house engineering team, design team, installation services, all available to our, to our customers. And, and um, we welcome your conversations. Well, and, and it, the service has been outstanding, and that's why we've had a great relationship for three years. Uh, looking forward now to ramping up orders with you in, in the many uh, weeks and months ahead. So, Curtis, Hi. always a pleasure. Thank you and your team uh, for your ongoing support. And, uh, yeah, we definitely look forward to picking up with you again in the new year and, and share some more stories. So, Wonderful. enjoy. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.